my happy with Motor City Nerds, and I'm going to talk to you guys about Peaky Blinders because I heard we got a trailer yesterday. Now, I have had, um, I haven't watched the trailer yet. Because I'm going to watch it on here, and I know how much you guys hate that, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, I have a theory, too, so we're going to get into that. Better like, share, and subscribe, and commenting helps me a lot. So, yeah, here we go. I love Peaky Blinders. I don't know how many of you guys are watching Peaky Blinders, but it's great. Um, I think I started watching it after the, whenever it first hit Netflix, and I can't remember if they had two seasons on at that time. Like that, or I just missed it, because I remember I watched the first two back-to-back, -back, and then the third one came up real quick I, some, some shit like that my ex got me into it and it's it's great it's fantastic the thing i really do love okay where i was praising succession and spider-man no way home for it, it's just when people when when they use time well when things know how to use time correctly when they when somebody knows how to use time jumps and like literally the sun shifting as a part of the like they're as part of the story and they are on top of it like it, it it's very it's awesome so when they know how to use time very well and they know when to do big time jumps in peaky blinders and they make it work feel played out it doesn't feel forced it, it's it's very well done i'll make a separate video talking all about the imagery in peaky blinders because there's so much and it's so good like the wild horse is at the beginning of last season that's just like a metaphor for tommy and it's great and it's like i want to run free but i have to hold down this business now and i feel chained to it and i'd rather and yada 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 anyway when i first watched it i was shocked because i know a lot of things depict ptsd very well especially when it has to do with war i there's a couple for sure but those might be World War II. But I don't really know of anything, because the, the term PTSD doesn't exist yet, obviously, in the show. PTSD, that term doesn't exist. They're all just like, they're a loony from the war. And it's like, Jesus Christ. If you don't know anything about World War I, but it was not a good time. And they were like children. It's, a, it's the same with every war, but it's like, I was going to say like Vietnam, but then it's like, no, it's the same in everything. It's like, these guys are 17, 18, 19, 20 years old. Like, they're babies. Digging fucking trenches and shit. That shit is crazy. Like, I love history, so it's like... But if if you don't really know about... I, I'm realizing people know less and less about things. I like the fact that they have this town affected. Like, when the guy that they fake kill in the season one, and he starts having a freak out somewhere. And uh, I believe it's the... I believe it's because somebody starts speaking Italian. Am I wrong? Something like that happens. And Tommy... And I think Tommy would have done this whether or not he was head honcho. But I really enjoy that he runs up to him because he also knows you're I know what you're going through because I have flashbacks too and we just don't know what to call them so like people on the street that it didn't go through it are looking at them but then they know they're like oh shit man that's so and so and he's having a freak out because of whatever and it's from the war and yada 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 and um like that's why Tommy smokes opium and shit and I find it very interesting that they are all him Arthur who's my favorite I fucking love Arthur besides Tommy because I know we all love Tommy Arthur is my favorite but everybody that was in the war that they show dealing with their PTSD or not sleeping or whatever it is, PTSD, um, they all handle it differently. Like when Tommy's doing dope and then he's not and then they'll show like Arthur getting so angry, stuff like that. And it's like, I, I guarantee you that's part of who Arthur is, you know, but that's, it's, I, I think they did that very well. And like I said, they're, they're telling you these characters have this condition that nobody knows is a condition and nobody knows how to treat besides like, yeah, they're freaking out and it's, it's super sad when you think about it and it's like damn man like that happened to a lot of people for a few wars <laughs> and it's not funny that's rough and I, they just they do it in such a, a, a we've seen ptsd in war movies before but peaky blinders doesn't i want for lack of a better word in an eloquent way and it, i just feel like eloquent and ptsd shouldn't be in the same sentence because it's not a fun thing to deal with i am not saying that i've dealt with that but i've got my own shit it ain't fun so it's like elo but from a writing and movie tv standpoint it's eloquent but that being said if go back and rewatch season one, especially then storytelling wise, it's still great. It's it's awesome. It's awesome. Peaky Blinders is fucking awesome. It's sweet. The violence is there. The swearing is there. It's fucking great. And mom loves Peaky Blinders. Mom rarely. She, it was so funny because you know how they ease up on the swearing uh, in the last season. They make a comment. They're like, oh, we're like rich folk now. We gotta stop that shit. Um, <laughs> mom literally said they're not swearing enough. I sat through Succession and Peaky Blinders just for them to cut back on it now. And I'm like, <laughs> fair point. We. <laughs> So when it comes to violence and it comes to swearing, I know if it's good, my mom will sit through it and eventually enjoy it. Succession, Peaky Blinders. But I always have to, I normally watch, she sat through Sopranos all on her own at this point. Like, that was funny. All on her own. And then she, <laughs> she thought that the TV broke and she thought that the power went out at the end of Sopranos. <laughs> And she used the term for the first time in my life. She called me and she said, what kind of stupid ass ending is this? <laughs> but yeah, normally when things have tons of swearing and tons of violence, 
as long as it's good enough, if you're up to mom's, if you're up to Amelia's level, <laughs> if you meet her standards of good storytelling, she'll put up with the swearing and the violence. <laughs> if it doesn't meet her standards, I just don't show it to her. And then there are certain things that I just know she wouldn't like. You know what I mean? It's my mom. I give it two seasons. I'll watch two seasons of something and or, if it's new, two episodes, and I'll be like, is this for mom? So Peaky Blinders, I was like, this is going to be a home run or it's going to swing way too hard and miss. <laughs> on the Amelia scale, but she loved it. It hit, she loved it. And then she was upset that they didn't have enough swearing last season. Oh, she loves, uh, and uh, this is a great movie too and people don't give it enough credit 28 days later. I know it's our like dialect and I know it's not, I, I know it's not Cillian Murphy. I know it's Killian. I know it's Killian. I'm just saying when I have it wrote down on paper, I might pronounce it incorrectly, but that's because I'm of my, where I'm from. And I, I, that's very interesting to me too, how people pronounce different things. Like his name's spelled with a C. So where I'm from, you would pronounce that Cillian, but I know it's Killian. <laughs> but anyway, if I pronounce it wrong, that's who plays Tommy Shelby. And he, my mom isn't, my mom will love actors and not know what their names are. If she met the governor from The Walking Dead, she wouldn't talk to him. She would be like, do you see the governor over there? Like she wouldn't be able to, to separate them. <laughs> Doctor Strange. <laughs> And Tommy Shelby, she has no clue what those actors' names are, but, I've, but I but I know she loves them a lot, and she loves Killian Murphy. She w can't tell you who that is. If you, if you ask her who that is, she's not going to know who you're talking about. Like, not, when you make a character like Tommy Shelby, he's, he's kind of unbreakable. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way to break that character. That's somebody who's like, I'm ready to fucking die at any fucking moment. Let, take my life, motherfucker. I'm crazy. Let's go. And Tommy is like that. Do you know how rare it is to have a, a lead character that is like that, that we love? I love Tommy Shelby. I think we all love Tommy Shelby, right? But, like, that's how he is. It does not matter. You can wave his kids. As long as, 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 long as his kids are safe and as long as his family's, to, their, to his knowledge, okay, he, he don't give a fuck. He's dying if he has to. He don't give a shit. And that's the scariest kind of person there is. I realized that. I was like, shit. I hope he doesn't have a kid. And then he had a kid. And I was like, shit, we're doing some big time jumps here. Are we going to hit the 40s and this kid's going to be in World War II? And he's going to go through what his dad did, but maybe worse. And that is Tommy's biggest, that would, that would break Tommy. Because this is what I mean with Tommy being unbreakable. It's like, how can you hurt this man? We can't take his life. That wouldn't bother him. Because he's like half suicidal anyway all the time. So it's like, what do we do? Oh, the only thing that could hurt him is his kid. And then we did more time jumps. And I was like, oh, shit. And then that nephew, now correct me if I'm wrong, that nephew started saying like fascist crazy propaganda last season, right? Like um, the one named after Karl Marx, uh, Ada's son. On like more than one occasion, it was... He, he said weird shit and oh and then he was racist to the boyfriend then he didn't like the boyfriend yeah and then he was saying weird shit about race purity and all this crazy shit so the nephew so Tommy's son's cousin Ada's son is saying crazy shit uh, at, and I'm like that might rub off on his kid then we have the crazy political shit that was happening at the end of last season with that guy who was literally a fascist trying to get into office with Tommy's help and, it, and they were trying to assassinate him yeah I was like oh no oh no so I was really afraid that that's what will happen. The one thing that would hurt Tommy Shelby is if his son went through the same exact hell that he did in the war. And that might happen. And now I'm like, oh God, you might make him a fascist too? I don't think they'll do that though. But the, the nephew is definitely getting wild. And I think that the, and I think that, I think that they're going to have a really big problem with that. And that might be a conflict with Ada. So now your nephew is going off to war and or maybe he won't. And maybe he'll just be, maybe he'll have some sense knocked into him. But it's like, could you imagine her having to be like, your uncle's fought to stop people like this and went through hell to do it and now you are in that political party, you little shit. Fuck them up. If your fucking kid comes home and says, I'm gonna be in the Hitler Youth and shit, you'd be furious, right? You should be furious. If your son comes home or kid comes home at all, daughter or whatever, and says they wanna be part of Hitler Youth, you need to stop that. While I look for the trailer, Arthur's my favorite. I don't know why, I, I, I do know why, I guess. Like, I, I always love obscure characters, but I love Arthur because he's just, one, he's a wild card. Two, he beats the brakes off people. He's Tommy's crazy I need you to handle this shit right now and I but what I really like about Arthur is that he had that the, he's oldest I think that's why he's not a Fredo or a Connor Roy like I think that Connor's gonna do some fucked up and like I said that never mind go watch my succession videos so there's a more of a respect there and more of a loyalty between Arthur even though he's the oldest and Tommy making this business because it, it wasn't a pass down thing but he still looks for 
this approval from his father. And that, ep- and that episode when he dips out and takes the money and Tommy knows, like, th- this is, I don't give a fuck about the money. You're fucked up. And that's a really nice thing about Peaky Blinders, too. And we'll get to Aunt Polly. Rest in peace, Al McRory. You are a fucking boss. Well, they're not looking for this approval from their dad because they know. They know how their father is. It's the oldest one that was like, I need you. And he's a grown-ass man. And not just a grown-ass man. He's the scary, I beat the fucking brakes off motherfuckers one. So it's like, the big bad wolf has something that he's scared of. And he needs his dad. And that's what he wants. And he can't have it. And he's like, he's like a big broken kid. And that's why I always like that Arthur kind of has like his little redemption thing. And he's great. But let's get into this trailer. And I might have to pause it back and forth in case of copyright. This is this is it, right? Okay. Ooh, creepy. Oh, shit. Oh, it's a Tommy gun. Okay, there we go. Oh, but those came in World War II. Oh, I love Cathet. I love Catholic imagery. I knew they were going to use a song. God damn. Ooh. Well, yeah, what's Michael's little red ass doing? Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. Oh, oh, this is beautiful. Oh, that bitch ass from New York. I forgot about her. Oh, Ada, walking in like a boss. It's the final season. Oh, Pitbull, little Pitbull. Oh, there's lots of Nazi shit happening. Oh, you burned the gypsy wagon. You're burning the gypsy side of you, the to- the Shelby side. Gas mask. Lots of Nazi shit. I didn't like have big reactions like I normally do because this is such a this is such serious subject matter. Who is fucked up right there? Okay, so we got the Tommy gun. We got uh, bitch ass Michael coming. Tons of Nazi shit. Who's the chick on the balcony? There's my boy Arthur. His kids don't look that old, but then again, who knows? It looks like the great Gatsby with... Michael, why do you have that stupid mustache? Ada walking into the Shelby Company, Company Limited is badass. Is that the motherfucker that played Al Capone in uh, Boardwalk Empire? This looks great. It looks real serious, though. And like, and Helen McRory, who played Aunt Polly, and she played Narcissa Malfoy, straight boss. Like, she was, if not the greatest female character on television since uh, Carmela Soprano. And I, I, I mean that when I say it 100%. She was amazing. She was born to play the role of Aunt Polly. That was, she was, it, really, it really was. And in the Harry Potter reunion, so, um... Tom Felton, Draco Malfoy, said something very interesting, and then I started noticing it, and he said something along the lines of, she had this way of playing, like, emotion in her eyes when her body was doing something totally opposite. He was like, she would have such, like, warmth and love in her eyes, and her stature would be, or would be totally different, and I've noticed that, and I think, honestly, that's half the reason that we love Aunt Polly, and, and re-watching parts of Peaky Blinders, and especially Harry Potter, I've noted, I'm, I'm right at Half-Blood, and she's in that one a lot. And I had already watched the reunion, so I was like looking for it. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, you can totally tell. I know exactly what, he's, what he means when he said that now. She was stunning as Aunt Polly. And her character was so complex and so great. But Aunt Polly was why you came back. Like, to watch, you know what I mean? It was like, we love Tommy and we love watching them fuck people up. But Aunt Polly was home on this show, you know what I mean? She's like the heart and soul of it. And... She was the one who said, it's okay, you murdered people at the end of the day and gave you a hug. Like, Aunt Polly was home on the show, I felt like. She's the mom. I know she's Aunt Polly, but she's the mom. So, yeah, I just want to give Helen McGrory her, her due because she is amazing. But, yeah, no, that's my fear is that Tommy's son, and maybe maybe it'll be just his nephew because it didn't look like they aged. But I can't tell because this this trailer goes pretty quick, and it's so serious. And there's a lot of – Peaky Blinders does a very good job, especially with their trailers, with just showing us, like, shot, like beautiful shots, but with a ton of, like – secret imagery in it. Like I said, the Catholicism, it's, it's, the Catholicism is heavy. We love Peaky Blinders and we're super excited for this. And I know that the trailers, uh, the trailer came out like two days ago or something, some shit like that. I know I missed it by a couple days, but I've been recording all late. I was so sick. 
I made that Christmas video and I felt so much better about myself because I wasn't going to record myself. I'm in gifts. I'm like an adult. You know what I mean? But it was like, normally it's just, I, I don't know, whatever. I was like, I'll just record this. They're gifts for my sisters. Who cares? And I posted it. And thank God I did because I was like, I felt like shit for not, I wanted to post a video every fucking night. And I got so sick. All I wanted to do with my vacation was record for you guys and get it out, get it out, get it out. And then I couldn't and it sucked. But yeah, I definitely think that something's going to go on with his family and somebody's going to end up being a fascist and it's going to break Tommy's heart. But for your son to go either get drafted unwillingly or willingly go like Tommy did and end up n not being a fascist just ending up in the war and ending up and, and Tommy knowing like he's gonna end up with the same fucked up view of life as me he's gonna end up with these attacks he's gonna end up with all this shit he's gonna end up smoking opium like his life is over like th th that would and, and it would make the story come full circle of like you you did all of this you built this whole empire you spilled so much blood for what you're all about family and now your fucking heir is doing this it's fucking crazy. And it's like, I get it. There's other siblings and other nephews and nieces, but it's like when it's your son, the one that, and, and the kid that you had with your one true love. And I love the lady he's married to now. What's her fucking name? She was the hooker. Um, Lizzie, she's a G. All the women in Peaky Blinders are amazing. Even the snake rat that's with Michael, the snake rat snake. Like the Tyrells, sneaky, sneaky rats. We all know over here at Motor City Nerds. <laughs> but yeah, uh, they're all, but they're great characters. They're all ambitious. They're all, they're not stupid. Like they're, they're, they're great. They're so well written. But Aunt Polly was just, Aunt Polly was a shit man. So yeah, rest in peace to Aunt Polly. When do we get, when is this coming out? When does this air? What date? This says it's, okay, all this says is early 2022. So I'm assuming, I keep saying this, but anytime anything doesn't have a date and they're saying early, I'm assuming March, right? I need to watch The Witcher, man. But that, dude, The Witcher caused an entire falling out between me and a friend I had for over a decade. If you are calling people because they're making a Facebook status that says, this is what I thought about The Witcher, and you are calling them panicking, thinking it's about you, you need to go see a doctor. That's insane to do, right? And and to cause chaos, like, at 30 years old, that's insane, right? Over, over... Over somebody posting whether or not they liked The Witcher Season 1. Maybe that's why I've subconsciously been ignoring The Witcher. Because <laughs> I love the games. I played them. But yeah, I'm Abby with Motor City Nerds. Remember to like, share, subscribe. It really helped me out a lot. And yeah, disliking, liking, that all helps me a ton. Um, if you want to subscribe, subscribe. I don't want to make anybody do anything they don't want to do. But yeah, if you like Peaky Blinders, let me know. And we still... And I'm... I have my, I, keep, I have so much shot. I just need to edit it and then transfer it and all this shit. And I'm still learning this new laptop. But yeah. Hopefully I'm getting things out to you guys soon. Because I have a bunch of stuff.